Hello, and welcome to High Safe Technology, your source for all your fall protection needs. First, let's look at some facts about fall protection. Falls are one of the leading causes of traumatic occupational death. Not using fall protection equipment, or using the wrong fall protection equipment, can mean the difference between life and death. At its most basic level, OSHA requires that any worker who is on an elevated surface four feet high or more must have fall protection, a free fall must be limited to six feet or less, and the force of the fall cannot exceed 1,800 pounds. Now let's look at some demonstrations of some of the misconceptions about wearing fall protection and the results of falling while wearing different types of equipment. We'll be looking at both the way the drop test dummy falls and also the computer-generated results that show how many pounds of force were put on the dummy from each fall. Please note, this video is for demonstration purposes only. OSHA prohibits the use of positioning belts in fall arrest situations. Here, we'll show you a couple of drop tests to demonstrate why. As you can see, the dummy's spine would have been in bad shape, and the chart on the upper right shows that the force on his body was well outside of the acceptable limit of 1,800 pounds. Here you can see that even though the shock-absorbing lanyard did its job and kept the forces on the dummy's body down below the 1,800-pound limit, his spine still would have suffered serious damage from that fall with that positioning belt. Just like positioning belts, OSHA also prohibits the use of climbing harnesses for fall arrest situations due to the possibility of spinal damage. Again, we'll show you a couple of drop tests to demonstrate why. Obviously, this is not a safe way to be connected for fall protection. We had to put the dummy back together after this one. The full body harness is the only type allowed by OSHA for fall arrest. However, on harnesses that include D-rings located at the hips, these D-rings are not allowed to be used for fall arrest situations. Here's why. Even though the dummy is now wearing the correct type of harness, being tied off to the side D-rings is obviously not going to protect you from injury in the event of a fall. Full body harness front web loops or D-rings are meant to be used for rescue applications or for vertical climbing where the OSHA free fall limit is two feet. You can see that a six-foot drop is not safe with a front connection. A real person would be choking at this point. For fall arrest applications other than vertical, the only correct point of attachment is to the back D-ring. However, this next drop will demonstrate why a straight lanyard does not meet OSHA requirements for fall arrest. A shock-absorbing lanyard or a self-retracting lifeline are the only correct ways to connect to the back D-ring for fall arrest. They reduce the force of a fall significantly to protect you from serious injury. An SRL dramatically limits both the force on your body from a fall and the distance fallen. Here are the last two drops shown side by side. On the left, a full body harness, a back D-ring attachment, and a shock absorbing lanyard. On the right, a full body harness, a back D-ring attachment, and a self-retracting lifeline. 
You can now clearly see why using the correct fall protection equipment is crucial to keeping workers safe at heights. Thank you for joining us. We are here to assist you with all your fall protection needs. If you have questions or would like information about a fall protection system, please call us at 1-800-642-0775 or email us at info at highsafe.com.